It's another rainy day here in SoCal, so you know what that means. Another computer build. How those are related, I don't know. But we got a bunch of Antec stuff we're gonna take a look at today, so a huge thanks to our sponsor for today's video, Antec. We interrupt this video to bring you a special message from iFixit. No, we interrupt this interruption with this interruption about new stuff from iFixit. We should even grab this card, but inventory sucks. Fix the inventory problems with iFixit. Whoa, don't drop it. Can't fix that with iFixit. Just kidding, yes you can. Wish you could take iFixit with you anywhere, but your pockets aren't big enough. Introducing the new Moray. And the new Mino. Take them with you anywhere. So get iFixit for your loved ones, or just get them for yourself. I'm gonna give you a little bit of a story. One of the first cases I ever actually like really kind of went into some heavy mods onto was an old Antec P182 case. I loved that tower. In fact, I might be able to dig up a picture of it and show you how I kind of did some water cooling stuff on it back when water cooling was not really mainstream or really even supported by chassis at the time. But the Antec P182 was a, was a case that had different chambers for different things. And it had drive cages that pulled out and had like tool lists. It was, it was really kind of ahead of its time. We're talking like, this is like 2004, 2005, maybe even. Yeah, right around there. Makes, you know, it's been a while since I've taken a look at any of Antec's stuff lately. So if you haven't heard of Antec, they've been around a long, long time. And they have always been like one of the leading manufacturers of cases and, and power supplies and stuff. And so I'm kind of excited to kind of take a look at what they've done it's been more than 10 years since I've looked at anything Antec. But anyway, this is the Performance One FT, which is their full tower case. Uh, it kind of builds upon some of their heritage, but what also this case has included with it is a temperature readout. So for like quick glance temperatures to see what your temperature is on your CPUs, um, it's all built into this case. So we're gonna go ahead, unbox it now, take a look at what's inside. They also sent us some other goodies to throw in there, of course. So this is the Antec Vortex 360. This is their 360 AIO with RGB pump and RGB fans. We've got a whole bunch of their Fusion 120 millimeter RGB fans so we can fill out this case with extra uh, fans if needed. We've got their signature series, their Platinum 1000 watt power supply here. And then we're gonna throw an Asus Tough 4080 in there. The Tough is actually not the biggest 40 series uh, graphics card that exists, but they advertise that this full tower will fit 40 series graphics cards, which are all pretty big. So I figured, you know, this would be a pretty good place to start. I might try a couple different ones that we have just to see if there's a limit. Uh, the biggest one we have is a Strix. Uh, but just to see if, you know, there's any size issues there. Uh, motherboard, I switched this out real quick on Audible. You might have seen a different one on the board, only because I didn't realize the one I grabbed was a DDR4 version. We are using DDR5 for this build uh, purpose today. So I had to switch this out. This is the Maximus Apex. This is actually for a different build that I'm doing. Um, but the CPU that I'm using is a 13900KF, so I needed a Z790 and of course DDR5, so we could use our, our T-Force Delta 6200 megahertz 32 gig kit, um, which is Intel XMP certified. So Intel system, Intel RAM, and then just because it's pretty, I haven't used a two and a half inch drive in a while, but you know what, this has like a, 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 like a light panel on it, which would be pretty neat. So we've got the Delta Max from T-Force here, which is a one terabyte two and a half inch SSD uh, SATA drive. So we'll see how the mounts are on that. If there's any like visible mounts where I can put it where they show off, that would be kind of neat. So let's get the box open. Let's kind of take a look at the case, kind of do a quick walkthrough of the case. We'll throw it together and then we'll show you how it all looks when it's built. So the Performance One FT, I'm trying to cut my finger off here. I really need to sharpen this knife. It can't even, it is tearing the tape. It can't even cut the tape. So I shouldn't be worried about cutting myself, I guess. Maybe a, a deep scratch. Moving on, can simultaneously fit 360 millimeter radiator in the top and in the front. So that's nice for those that are looking for maximum cooling. And today's hardware, especially 40 series graphics cards and uh, 7,000 series AMD CPUs and 13th gen Intel CPUs run hot. So because of that, having as much airflow as possible, even if you're running an air cooler, is gonna be important. This is our accessory kit. Oh, it looks like unfortunately ours snapped open in shipping. So we'll have to dig those screws out, but at least they're all contained in here. But what I'm really interested in checking out on this though is the CPU temperature readout on the case. And like I said, because of all of the current concerns with temperatures and throttling and all that with modern CPUs, it'll be nice to be able to just 
look over at your system. Like for instance, let's say you're playing a video game and you're starting to get some weird stutters or something and you just wanna make sure you're not throttling because you're overheating or something. You just look over at your tower and see at a glance, what are your temperatures? That's kind of something that's become a bit of a trend lately with uh, brands and manufacturers now incorporating uh, temperature readouts and other sort of monitoring built into the chassis so that you don't have to install third-party software. It's all just integrated right in. I'm not sure which way is the top and bottom here. This is the bottom. All right. So that's pretty classy. It's nice. We got some tempered glass. We've got some really, I like the diamond shape, like uh, cutouts on there. Look at the front of this thing. That is neat looking, look at this. So plenty of airflow in the front. It's a pretty fine mesh. So this is gonna stop a lot of your big uh, dust, debris and hair if you have pets and stuff from getting inside the system. Uh, the readout's actually up here. So if you're sitting at your desk, the readout's gonna be on top. So you'll have to kind of like lean up to look at it. I do kind of wish it was more on the front right here or something, but it is up here on the top. Power button, reset button, combo headphone microphone jack, USB 3, USB 3, USB-C. So they all have these little dust grommets, which are plugs, which are nice. So if you're not using them, plug them up so dust doesn't make their way in there. All right, so we have two captive thumb screws holding in the tempered glass. It does latch in the bottom, so that's nice. When you go to take it off, it's not like it's just gonna fall and hit the corner and break or something. So the fans that are pre-installed are actually perfect for like a blackout theme if you wanted. Um, as you can see here, we have three 140 millimeter by 30 mil fans in the front. So the 30 mil thickness of fans, which are kind of becoming the norm these days, give you a more aggressive blade pitch, which means at the same RPM, you can scoop and move more air or more CFM. So having three 140s intaking on the front means an, a lot of airflow going into this. And we have a pre-installed uh, airflow fan in the rear exhausting 120 millimeter fan. There's none up at the top, which is kind of perfect because our 360 AIO is gonna go there. So we won't have to actually rearrange or move any fans. Um, this front piece right here, this design element, this is actually just magnetic. So as you can see that pulls out the top, it's held in by magnets. You can see them right there. And like I was telling you, this fine mesh doubles as the filter. So there's no filter behind it. You just have fine mesh stopping as much of the dust as possible. So when you're ready to clean this case, so you don't wanna just blow it that way, just blow it into the system. So you just pop this out, take it outside, take your canned air, whatever you're gonna blow it with, or a vacuum cleaner. You can blow it back through the way it wants to come. So you would go from the inside out, blow it all out. Maybe a, maybe a damp rag when it's dry, just reinstall it. Two little latches on the bottom, magnet it on the top, and you're good to go. That's also how you obviously access your fans right here for your intake. So as you can see right here, it supports both 120s and 140s. You have both rails sitting there. So you could put a one, a 360 rad on the front. Um, here's the top. This is a mesh filter. So if you were using that as an intake or something, which would be very odd to have air coming in through the top um, and you're exhausting this, I would personally maybe remove the filter. And then when you put this on the top, you can see nice high airflow through there so that you'd be able to just have it exhausting air nice and comfortably. So a choice there, it is a magnetic filter. And then this comes off toolless, as you can see. So the front filter is toolless, the top filter is toolless. And then if we take a look at the back here, once again, two captive thumb screws, whoops, that's the wrong one. That's the power supply bracket. Just one on the top up there. Side panel comes off pretty easily. Set that aside. It's a nice thick glass, by the way. So now you can see some pretty cool elements of the case that are designed because it's glass back here to hide your cable management. That way you don't have to worry about how things look. So we've got a thumb screw here. So once those screws are off, that thumb screws up, this top piece will come out or come off. You can see they sort of slide into a little channel right there. And then the rear one here slips up and then out. And then down here, you can see how we have our, um, three and a half inch drive sleds down here if you're still running three and, a half, three and a half inch drives. If not, you can remove this and then you'll have more clearance for cables and stuff down in the bottom. Cause as you can see right here, you know, we have a lot of cross flow or flow through right here, which isn't bad. Um, you can even mount fans right here if you wanted, but you have plenty of room right here with this gap for your front rad. Even though there's a pretty big opening here, the cables will blend in cause they're black. And then I think, I wonder if you can even mount the two and a half inch drives right there, cause that would look kind of cool. But anyway, check this out, big thick rubber grommets right there. Um, in terms of fitment of your motherboard, 
ATX motherboards will fit just fine. EATX, depending on how wide they are, may, may interfere with this, but because it comes over past where this indentation is, um, may or may not clear. So you'll have to keep that in mind when it comes to building your system. And not only is a drive sled able to come out, it has two positions. Right now, pre-installed, it's at the closest position to the power supply. But let's say you needed this and you have a long power supply, you do get about an extra inch of clearance by moving it over to the left position. Uh, which puts it right in front of the fan. The nice thing with it being right in front of the fan and then there's these kind of openings on the side is your fans are also gonna kind of like directly cool your drives. Spinning platter drives can get pretty warm if they're doing a lot of read writes. Um, so having direct airflow on there is good for them. So with that said, I guess one of the best ways to see how this case feels is to build in it, so let's do it. It's done. And as you might notice, it's actually a different motherboard than we started with. One, the whiteboard just wasn't quite matching very well. Two, the whiteboard also only had two RAM sticks. And even though there's only two RAM, two RAM sticks in there now, or RAM slots, I should say, even though there's only two in there now, I wanna put four in there and kind of play around with 13th gen and the four sticks of RAM to see kind of how it's, you know, made its compatibilities get better with QVL and stuff as we move forward. But this, like, looks fantastic. Uh, one of the, one of my favorite features about building in this case, honestly, is those two covers in the back, the O1 and the O2. So much can be hidden behind there uh, where it just makes it look super clean. And then because of the team group uh, SSDs in the back, which also have a light panel built into them, in this particular case, both pun intended and the case itself, it looks pretty sick on the back side to see that tied into the rest of the lighting theme. And then because the Antec stuff all uses a motherboard three pin header, everything syncs to whatever the motherboard's doing. So there's no extra software needed to make that, that, to make that work. Um, if you were running a motherboard maybe that didn't have RGB, built into it if it's an older board. The little control box does actually have a button on there where you can change the mode and the colors and all that and have it be its own controller. So right now it's just passing through what the motherboard is doing to sync, but we could override that if we wanted to have the Antec fans do something different or uh, if your motherboard doesn't support it. And the same goes for the AIO pump as well. Speaking of the AIO, Phil and I both just love this kind of reactor core looking lens is I guess what we could call it. It's like not an infinity mirror, but it kind of looks like an infinity mirror. It just looks really cool. But yeah, it was really easy to build in this case because there's so much opportunity for cable management. Um, the, the basement, plenty of room to hide stuff down in there. Even though we are using the thousand watt power supply, we took out the cage on the bottom because we didn't need it. So it gives us a place to hide more cables. Um, we're using the 90 degree adapter on here, as you can see, which allows us, even though we have a cable adapter on here, uh, gives us you know a cleaner look. We can close the side panel without having an impact. This is still very important, I think, for 40 series owners to have. A couple things to mention here too is the top actually does have two screws that you can take out to make it removable, which make installing an AIO or a radiator or custom water cooling setup on the top a bit more simple. I chose to just sort of install it with a pre-mounted, uh, but you can take that off with two screws. More importantly, fine mesh on cases has kind of been a death sentence for a lot of cases where it just hurts the airflow. But ironically, the amount of airflow coming through here on the front with the fine mesh is actually kind of mind boggling. You would think that it would be blocking airflow more than it is, but it's not. The, the temperatures in this case, even though the side panel's off for the sake of shooting because glass, uh, when the side panel's on, temperatures are perfectly fine. I mean, you can see right now the CPU is down in the 20s while we're sitting here idle. And then even at load, um, it goes up into the 80s and that is with the Asus motherboard. But on the front, you can see I have three 120 millimeter fans installed. A 360 radiator will fit in here comfortably, but you can fit up to a 420 in here. Um, it would be a little bit snug, but it will fit. As you can see, it lines up with the cutout. 
Obviously this would be mounted on the inside because it's a flush mount on the front, so you can't mount it on the outside by the grill, but you can fit up to a 420 radiator on the inside. If you're looking for a full tower, that just gives you so much functionality. Like for instance, I mean, I'm, I'm running their iUnity software right here, which is a very lightweight piece of software that shows you things like CPU load, um, the temperature of the CPU, the clock speed, same thing with GPU. And the fact that that ties into the built-in temperature monitor inside the case, so that you'd be able to kind of look at your case and be able to see what the temperature is. I do wish that that was more on the front rather than the top, because if it was on a desk like this, you'd have to actually stand up to sort of look at it. So maybe in a revision in the future, they can move that somewhere else. Um, that'd be a little bit more in your face, that way you can more easily see it, depending on your sitting position. If it's lower than you, like down on the floor, on a, a pedestal or something, you'd be able to see it no problem. Um, but yeah, everything on this has been uh, pretty easy to work in. I didn't have any real complaints. The placement of the cable pass-throughs are very convenient. The cable pass through at the top of the motherboard tray, instead of it being like a flat grommet that it has to make a crazy turn through, it's actually kind of recessed, almost like a shelf for it to pass through, which makes the bends a lot easier on the cables and a lot easier to cable manage and getting stuff uh, moved through there without having it interfere. But yeah, I think with these particular fans, um, this memory and this AIO, like the build just looks classy is the best way to put it. The, the RGB lighting on here, I was a little concerned initially because of the fact that it smoked and I was worried that that was gonna really dim out the LEDs because it's not like a white translucent ring, it's like a, 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 like a smoked tint. As you can see, there's no brightness concerns at all. It matches the colors of the other devices without looking like it's darker or something like that. So it's actually, looks really, really good. I haven't looked at Antec fans in a long time, so these are ones that you should definitely be considering if you want a simple RGB fan, but still gives you very good airflow, especially if you're dealing with like mesh panels or radiators that you've got to overcome. It, it's doing a fantastic job of it. So anyway, huge thanks to Antec for sending us this case and these uh, Antec pieces to take a look at. Like I said, it's been a long time since I have looked at something from Antec, but I started a lot of my, but I started a lot of my early PC modding and stuff, like I said, with that Antec P182. Um, anyway, thanks for watching, guys. Links are down below. You guys can go and check it out. Links to the AIO, the fans, and of course, the uh, Performance One uh, FT case. Definitely worth checking out. It doesn't break the bank, but it gives you a lot of features and a lot of value uh, for what you get for the money. So if you want to see current pricing and all that, prices are always changing. You got to click the link down below. That way you guys can see what the current price is. All right, thanks for watching. We'll see you in the next one.